G'day, it's Marshall from MM4x4. Uh, today I'm here in the Mackay region in the cane fields uh, in a 79 series 2.8 litre auto. Uh, we've just adapted the lockup kit for this model. So if you're wondering why you might want to install a torque converter lockup kit into your car, there's really four reasons. Um, the first one and the most important one is um, when the torque converter is locked, the, the transmission doesn't generate much heat. It just st stays nice and cool. So if you're pulling really heavy loads through hills um, or driving in the sand um, in low range, things like that, your transmission doesn't heat up. So that's the, that's the number one reason. The second reason is to save fuel because when the torque converter is slipping and it's generating heat, well, that heat is actually wasted fuel and it's putting less power to the road. Um, the third reason is um, when you're engine braking, so when you have your foot off the pedal and you keep it locked, you get slightly better compression braking. Uh, and the other reason is uh, it just generally enhances the drivability of the car. So, you know, for example, in this car, in manual mode, it, it operates like a, a manual, a proper manual car, and the driver has control of that. Okay, I'll first show you a little bit about um, what I'll have on this video. Um, I've got a GoPro on the instrument cluster. I've got a um, camera on a scan gauge three um, and on the lockup switch. So this is the lockup here. It's on the A pillar. So the scan gauge obviously isn't provided with the kit, um, but this little button here, um, which attaches to the A pillar trim, um, that basically the LED gives you the status of lockup, and it's also how you turn the kit on and off. Um, basically, you just push it once, and as a short flash means it's turned off. I'll push it again. See, it's a longer flash and it's turned on. So, for example, at the moment we're doing about 70k an hour, we're in fifth gear and the car won't lock up. I'll just flick it across to manual mode and go into fourth gear. So the conditions are suitable for lock up and there you see the blue lights come on. So it's now locked up. Now, to give you an example of how it's assessing how the car's performing in real time, um, if I go to fifth gear at 70k an hour, it's too slow to be able to be locked up. So the kit will recognise that and immediate unlock. So I'll just go to fifth gear, and there you see it's unlocked. Go back to fourth gear, and it's locked up. So the kit's fully automatic in operation. Um, it has lots of protections built in, so you can't be locked up at, say, 1200 RPM and things like that. Um, and it's essentially set and forget. There's nothing you can do um, to damage the car using the kit, right? So there's no buttons to push all the time if you want to change how it operates. The way you control the kit is through the shift lever. So like I did there, I'm in fourth gear. If I just get the car up to 80, for example, there, and I go into fifth, you see I'm in fifth gear and it's remained locked. So what sets our lockup kits apart from all others is the fact that it's a computer using advanced digital control to control the lockup clutch and it, what it does is it sits on the CAN bus of the vehicle and it reads and knows all the information about what's going on. So it knows the speed you're going, it knows what gear you're in, it knows the RPM, it knows if you're in um, high or low range four-wheel drive, uh, knows if your headlights are on and it uses all that information to support its operation. So what that means is it properly integrates with the operation of the car and it not only locks up when it's appropriate to lock up, but also more importantly, it'll unlock when it needs to unlock. And all that's achievable because the computer is processing the information from the car in real time and making the decisions on the fly. So the kit automatically recognises, uh, it sort of has three different modes of operation. There's how it operates in D, there's how it operates when you're in the uh, manual mode, and there's also how it operates in low range four wheel drive. And it automatically detects, you know, using the CAN bus as to what mode you're in. So in D, uh, it operates uh, above, or activates above about 70 kilometres an hour. That's where it takes over control of um, the lockup from the factory computer under certain circumstances. Um, but in the manual mode, it locks up basically from second gear. All right, so second gear through to sixth gear. And that turns it into more like a, a manual gearbox. All right, I'm going to demonstrate the manual mode now. So we're in first gear and it locks up starting at second gear. So I just move it into second. There you go, second gear and it's locked up. So now it's just go through all the gears. Fourth, fifth, and sixth. So there it 
mains locked in all those gears um, and as you come out of uh, sixth gear to fifth it remains locked but if I now slow down what will happen is the car actually it auto shifts from fifth to fourth but it's done it there but it did it at a point which was um, too low a speed to retain lock up and the kit's just automatically unlocked but now we're in fourth gear and I get up to a speed which you can lock there you have it, it's locked up in fourth gear. Well, one of the features which is unique to our lockup kits is a feature called Safe Lock. Um, what it does is essentially copies the factory's parameters when it enables or allows lockup. So, for example, if there's high slip in the torque converter, the factory won't lock it up until that slip reduces to protect the clutch from wear. Now, our kit does exactly the same thing, and I'll just demonstrate that now for you. So I'll go into fifth gear so it's not locked, okay? Now if I just gently go up to 80k an hour, it's not actually slipping very much at the moment. And I'll get it up to 80. And there it's locked up, okay? Now I'll do the same thing. All right, it's unlocked, but I'm gonna put my foot into it. So now there's lots of slip. Now you can see now I've gone past the 80 point, and there it's locked up at about 95. So what it's done is it's actually waited until the slips within the same factory limit as the um, well, within the limit the factory sets and copies its behaviour so it helps protect your clutch. Now something else the kit does, uh, it avoids any shift shock. So if you're in fifth here now, if I put my foot down a lot, right, and I drop to fourth, you'll see that it actually unlocked and then relocked. So that's again that's copying the factory behaviour. Um, so it unlocks for the gear change so that you don't get that shift shock going through the whole drive line. And these are the only, this is, it's only because we've got the digital control that we can do advanced features like that and um, not only make the car nice and drivable, um, it also protects the drive line as well. Another feature we have it built into the kit is emergency brake unlock. And what that basically does is if it detects that you're decelerating very quickly, it will immediately hand control of the torque converter so on the way back to the factory computer so it's in the known state that the factory would have it in. And that's so there's no possible chance it can interfere with your stability control or, or ABS systems. All right, I'll just talk a little bit about just sort of how the kit's working. So I'm in drive at the moment, just accelerating up to say um, 80. And once you hit 80 k's an hour, you see the blue lights on it, it's locked up. Now, the way the kit works is if the factory's locking the torque converter, it hands over control of the lockup to the factory computer. But if the kit then decides, no, I want to intervene, I want to take over control, it then switches the relay and it takes control of this torque converter. So it's actually working in harmony with the transmission computer and it's seeing what it's up to and what lockup kit wants to do and then uh, just basically hands control backwards and forwards. So as an example, we're now, uh, I'll get us up to 100. Right, and the normal behavior of the transmission is when you take your foot off the pedal, it unlocks the torque converter. Now if I do that, it's actually, see the blue light stays on, it's taken over control and said, no, I'm gonna keep it locked so you, when you put your power down again, you've got direct responsiveness. So that's an example of where it will hand over control at 100, it would be locked anyway by the factory computer, so the kit just says, okay, you do it. As soon as you take foot off the pedal, it takes control, put your foot back on the pedal, it hands back control. So that's just an example of how the kit works with the car and isn't fighting against it. Now the switch is located on the A pillar um, very deliberately. And that's so you just sort of any peripheral vision and at a glance you can just see that the lock the kit's locked up or the car's locked up I should say. And basically when you're towing heavy and the like, if the blue light's on, you know that you know the transmission's staying cool because it's locked. Um, but there also has a feature that, that to show how well the kit's integrated with the car. Um, if you're driving at night, the LED automatically dims. Now I'll demonstrate that now, and all I'll do is I'll put my hand over the light sensor. So it thinks it's dark and there you go, you see the LED's dimmed. I take my hand away again so you're in bright conditions and it stays on. But I can also override that. So say for example, I want to drive with my headlights on, which I'll do now. And so I'll just get back up to lock up speed so you can see. There it is. But you can see it's, uh, you can see it's very dim. I can override that if I just push and hold the LED for four seconds. You see it's bright again. So now it just ignores um, the, the auto dimming function. 
So I've got my headlights on, yet I can still see the LED. I'll just turn that back to auto dim, press and hold it for four seconds. Back to dim, turn the headlights off, and it's back to full brightness. Okay, the kit also works in low range four wheel drive, so I'll just put it in low range now. Okay, we're in four wheel drive. Now, in D, it doesn't do anything to change lock up. Uh, basically, you've used the, the manual mode and then it'll lock up from second gear. So I'll just demonstrate that. There we go, second gear, and now it's locked. So from now on, it drives like a manual and locks in second, third, and fourth gears and moving the shift lever that doesn't go into the fifth or sixth when it's in manual mode low range and as you slow down as soon as it gets too slow it just automatically unlocks or you can just go back up again so you get it locked up in third there you go it's locked up and then as you slow down you can just downshift as well right down the first gear now it doesn't lock in first gear because the transmission doesn't support that I expect I'm going to get some questions about um, the Scan Gauge 3. Um, it's not my preferred ODB2 reader. Uh, my preference is actually the Ultra Gauge MX. Uh, the reason I like that one is because it's so much smaller and it displays the, the data clearly. And you, it's a bit harder to set up than the Scan Gauge 3, but once it's set up, you don't touch it. And it just sits there and works. So if you're interested in getting an ODB2 reader, like a scan gauge or an ultra gauge, I'll, I'll put a, a link in the comments below so um, you'll be able to go to either website. And if you want to purchase one of our kits, um, you can go to the website and you can buy it from our online store, um, or you can get it from one of our, our dealers around Australia. So um, have a look at the website for that network. Uh, and a big thanks to Diesel Power Unlimited in Mackay, who've given us access to their, this is a 79 series uh, vehicle they use for their R&D purposes. Um, big shout out to Cookie um, and the team there, they've um, given me great help and uh, certainly appreciate um, the support I got. Uh, if you've got any uh, questions you have for us, uh, feel free to contact us, um, go to the website um, on the contact us page and send us an email um, and our details are all there. And thanks for watching.